This video is strictly my opinion, and it is not intended as a hit piece, so please don't harass anyone mentioned in this video. That includes Nikki and Barb's. And I'm not making this video to start sh making it because, well, you know, I'm a recovering people pleaser, so here we go. Now, if this video suddenly, you know, disappears and I just coincidentally happen to go on a huge shopping spree, then you can judge me because I just told y'all I have no money. Please let me reiterate, though, I don't want to cancel Nikki. I don't believe in cancel culture. I don't believe you're a bad person if you still listen to Nikki. I could be wrong, after all. I hope I am. But sadly, it's hard to argue when so much of this has a paper trail and the criminal records, you know. I, I don't know how I can express my disappointment without underselling it, which brings us to part one of this video. My Dark Stan Era. So back in 2010, I would have been about 18 years old. So after the release of Pink Friday, I was a huge fan of Nicki Minaj. You know how I've recently drawn Melanie Martinez like over and over again because that's what autistic people do, I guess. We just hyperfixate. Well, back in 2011, it was Nicki Minaj who I drew over and over again, and everyone in my life was confused. Why Nicki? I was a goth kid. I don't listen to hip hop. And then all of a sudden I was wearing hot pink and blasting super bass. A lot of friends dropped me because they couldn't handle the sudden change. They thought I was being fake when in reality I was just spiraling mentally. I had just gotten out of my first ever breakup and I had had an extremely unhealthy preoccupation with my ex. He went from proposing marriage to dumping me over my then best friend telling him a bunch of lies about me, never gave me any real closure, which left me confused and alone. So everyone I cared about, I lost them in a pretty short time window. And my home life wasn't great either, so I escaped into Nicki Minaj's world as a coping mechanism. I felt that my life wasn't worth living, but instead of offing myself, I decided to live vicariously through her. And naturally, I went a little overboard. I absolutely idolized everything about Nicki, and in an extremely unhealthy way. She could do no wrong. Even if I felt like she was wrong about something, even if I couldn't justify something about her behavior, Queen Nikki was always right. My faith was so strong in Nikki that it was, it was practically a religion to me. She could have made me think left was right. Queen Nikki said I needed to stay in school, and even though I was rapidly accruing debt and anxiety and a degree isn't that useful for aspiring artists and novelists, I stayed in school. Because Nikki said so, and Nikki can do no wrong. And if you think you're a cringy stan, let me introduce you to early 2010s me. You know that do it for her meme? I pasted a bunch of Nicki Minaj photos over top of it, printed it out, and fucking framed it, and hung it above my desk. My motivation came from a framed Nicki Minaj meme. I got over $40,000 in debt in the name of Nicki Minaj, and I never even got a job requiring a degree. That's some pretty permanent cringe right there. I mean, my first job after college was during the pandemic, so that would have been about four years or so after I graduated college, I got my first real job. That's how bad it was. And it was at a f***ing deli. But anyway, f rewinding. Back then, I was also keeping up with award shows. And I remember being so confident that Nikki would win an award for Super Bass that I spent hours stressing about somehow missing the show and I wore my favorite Nicki Minaj shirt for the occasion. I remember when Nikki collected her award, uh, my family soured the moment for me by loudly insulting her. They shut me down when I defended Nikki, which caused me to run off to sulk about how nobody had any respect for me. Or for that matter, how nobody had any respect for the closest thing I had to a positive relationship in my life at that point. And while I'm describing one isolated incident, it was pretty typical for things like that to happen to me in my teens and early 20s. And actually, yeah, in my childhood too. But around that time we're talking about today, Stan Twitter was all I had back then. I remember thinking about how fresh and fun her music was, and how she sang and rapped on the same track, which wasn't really a thing back then. And her style of rapping was unlike anything I'd ever heard before. Not that I was that familiar with the genre, uh, as I mostly listened to goth music up until that point. But I think a lot of it had to do with how she carried herself in such an unapologetic, proud manner. On top of being breathtakingly beautiful, she seemed so in control, charismatic, poised, and an absolute f***ing boss. All the things I wished I could be, basically. 
And that's why it surprised me so much when she married a man convicted with attempted rape, with violence against women being something that hits home to me. Which brings me to what made me stop standing. Listen, guys, you know I'm a spiritual person. I believe Earth is a school and that we all reincarnate to learn life's lessons. I'm sure we've all done terrible things in past incarnations, and I feel like canceling people and denying them forgiveness underestimates everybody's ability to grow as people and become one. But I also believe that if somebody's behavior is upsetting you, you don't have to give them your energy. And forgiveness does not entail you to opening yourself up to get hurt again. Not even in a parasocial relationship. You know, love and light, that's all nice. I'm not here to denounce love and light, but you can't force it all the time. You have to protect yourself because not everyone around you is going to be love and light. Okay, necessary disclaimers aside. So what made me drop a hyperfixation like that? Well, I'd say a small part of it is actually how she acts and how she encourages her fans to act, especially online. For some recent examples, because I want to get this out of the way before we get into the meat of the video, um, like when she complained about Lil Nas X not owning up to having run a Nicki Minaj fan account. Like, come on, no explanation is needed for that. That's not something shady. The man was under no obligation to disclose that or to explain himself or trying to hide it. That's shit's his personal business, and it's not cool to expose people for their past stan accounts. That's shit's embarrassing, okay? And then there was her recent vaccine fear-mongering because of some ad hoc reasoning regarding her brother's friend's testicles or something like that. Though considering the timing, that was probably a distraction from, you know... And, uh, then of course, there's her use of the hashtag Black Girls Tragic to drag black women online, which for context, the hashtag is used to spread awareness for black girls who have been murdered, and a lot of people have feelings about that, and she just you know, refused to take responsibility for that. So things like that, which may have been a social media manager commenting on her behalf, to be fair. It wasn't necessarily her, but all that still rubbed me in the wrong way. Her name was attached to it. So stuff like that did slowly drive me away from her over the years. Not to mention I'm a believer in building up other women, and as I matured, I realized how much of her career was dedicated to tearing other women down, like the after all that surgery, you are still ugly and that is what gets me line that most think was directed at Cardi B, who has been arguably more successful lately, so, you know, kind of makes Nikki look, ah, uh, what's the word? Jealous. Jealous. Basically, Nikki reduces women into two categories. Beautiful barbs who worship her and ugly dumb girls who don't. And I just, you know, as an adult, I see through that stuff now. I didn't see through that stuff when I was younger, but I see through it now. So by the time it got to the recent drama, I had already drifted apart from her. Uh, it just didn't resonate with her anymore. As I aged and matured myself, she started to seem less like the girl boss I believed she was, and more messy, emotionally immature, and Plagued by internalized misogyny, I started to feel like she didn't actually care about the causes she claimed to stand for, and more like she was taking advantage of these groups to grow her platform. In case her blatantly admitting that she lied about being bisexual to get attention does not outright confirm that's how she uses causes. Now, I'm all for a good hustle, but I find it upsetting when straight girls lie about being queer like it's trendy and cool. Because for those of us who have been abused, kicked out, etc. for being queer, seeing someone with millions of fans trying on our identity for fame and funsies and then conveniently dropping something that is, for us, permanent, is a bit of a turnoff. Because I'm queer, I spent my whole life either closeted or ostracized, and I didn't get to choose being queer, and then drop it when being marginalized no longer served me, and you'd think that Nikki, being marginalized on many counts herself, would know better. I get the impression that she just really wanted to be a gay icon and that she was willing to do everything she could to establish herself as one and tie herself to the gay community, including pretending to be bisexual. None of that's enough to make me hate a person, though. We all make mistakes, but some mistakes are a bit much for me. And just a heads up, this is where the video gets dark. What really turned me off from her starts with no crime from Nikki herself, but her husband, Kenneth Petty. So Kenneth was accused of first-degree rape for allegedly raping Jennifer Hewitt, knife point in 1994. Note I'm not saying allegedly because I don't believe her, I'm saying allegedly because I want to protect myself legally. 
Kenneth initially denied the claims, but later pled guilty to attempted rape, which is no better in my eyes. The latter just has a lighter sentence, so I'd say what happened here is he had no chance of winning, so he changed his story to one that would get him less jail time. I don't have a transcript of the case. I could be wrong about some things, but I do believe everyone has a right to defend themselves, by the way. But I just, I don't have a good feeling about this one. I do not believe him. And before you know it, he was grabbing a hold of my jacket. Jennifer, what happened after he grabbed you? I felt something in my back. So I just assumed there was, I assumed there was a gun. Okay. And I started walking. And I'm pleading with him the whole way. Um, he pushed me down on the bed. We wrestled for my clothes. And so I'd let go, and as soon as I let go, he'd grab my pants. It was like a tug of war after a while. I just got tired. After he got off top of me, he stood in the mirror, and he beat his chest. And he said, I'm the man, I'm the, I'm the man. And so I'm asking him, please let me go. I won't tell nobody. I'm, I just seen this big plastic bottle, almost like the bleach mm. bottle, sorry. And I just took it and, and swung it at him with all my might. And when he went to duck, I pushed him and he fell in between the beds and I just ran. And I just, I just kept running and just kept running. And before I knew it, I was in front of my school. And security guard was asking me, like, where have you been, Jennifer? You're late. And I told them, and they called the police. And for those of you who are new to this channel, this isn't exactly the Believe All Women show. You know, I built my platform off of defending the falsely accused, uh, Melanie Martinez, Johnny Depp, and I don't usually have a lot of luck when I make videos about any other topic. <laughs> oh, I do believe in all, hearing all women out for sure, but, but I'm the first to say that some people lie, which makes it harder for real survivors to get taken seriously. However, I do believe Jennifer. The thing is, if Kenneth was famous at the time, I might be a bit more skeptical. But at the time this happened, he wasn't famous and Jennifer had nothing to gain. As a matter of fact, this whole thing completely uprooted her life. Like, the more I learned, the more horrified I was at all of the negative consequences there were, just for her defending herself. I just knew he did what he did and he went to jail and I... I had to leave my family, I had to leave my home, and I had to move away. And, at, and particularly after hearing Jennifer talking about how all this stuff made her feel, there isn't a doubt in my mind that she's telling the truth. And it's really hard to convince me of anything beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know. I question if reality is even real, like at least six times a day. But I believe Jennifer. Yes, I admit that her account of the events, it does seem a bit rehearsed, but it does make sense in this case, because she's not sharing her testimony right after the incident. She's been invited to talk about it on a talk show, where she would have been expected to prepare first and has had nearly 30 years to process this. So, therefore, I can't really count that against her. And yet, even after all these years, the pain is still clearly visible to the point where there's snot running out of her nose. I relate to her having been assaulted myself and how she talks about how she wasn't thinking about Kenneth Petty facing justice because she was too busy blaming herself. You know, I, I know that I'm not alone in understanding how that feels. Um, though Kenneth Petty first denied the rape charges, he was charged with first degree rape, subsequently pleaded guilty to attempted rape and spent over four years in prison according to the inmate records did you feel that justice was served? I, I don't think I thought about justice per se because I was still blaming myself. Okay. I thought it was something that I did or didn't do. So I don't, I don't think I thought about if I got justice, I didn't. So how, though, has this come up again so many years later? Well, as a level 2 sex offender, he's considered a moderate risk for becoming a repeat offender and is required to register as a sex offender. 
The sex offender registry is an, it's a public safety resource to warn people, basically. He failed to do so. He failed to accept the consequences of his actions. And this is a serious crime punishable, I believe, to a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison and a lifetime of supervised release. But what does all this have to do with Nikki? After all, I, I never believed in blaming a woman for her husband's crimes. So why, what does this have to do with Nikki? Well, you see, it's one thing to turn a blind eye to horrible things your husband has done. You never know what's going on behind the scenes. But it's another thing to actively harass the survivor, to try to pay her off, to intimidate her, so she doesn't talk, so she withdraws the charges, you know. Nicki Minaj and Kenneth Petty decided to send their associates to Jennifer and harass her for a seven-month span to get her to recant her story um, from 1994 in order to get him off of the sex offender registry. There was um, an associate um, of Kenneth and Nikki Minaj who came to the state that I was living at. I've been harassed by people calling family members that I haven't even spoken to or seen in quite a while, offering money, um, phone calls from different people in regards to this supposed letter that I written, people approaching my daughter. Jennifer, have you ever spoken to Nikki directly? I did, in March of 2020. She called me and she said that she got word that I was willing to help them out in a situation I, I didn't understand what she was referring to. Um, she offered to fly me and my family to LA. She, um, I turned it down and I told her, woman to woman, this really happened. And I hadn't spoken to her since. And Nikki is the one who personally reached out to me. She's, you know, in regards to helping her, helping them in this situation. And then the threats that I received because I kept saying no to every offer, to every suggestion. The last um, incident was when um, one of their associates put $20,000 on my lap and I st still kept saying no. The last message I received was that I should have taken the money because they're going to use that money to put on my head. And then I just, I just cut off everything, changed my numbers. I moved multiple times, um, relocated from away from my children. This associate that she's referring to, this is the same guy who recently posted an Instagram video threatening to, uh, to, to either kill or to do bodily harm to Jennifer. And this post came literally six days after Kenneth Petty accepted a plea deal here in California uh, for failing to register as a sex offender. This is the same guy that showed up at Jennifer's house with the $20,000 and put it on her lap with a pre-written recantment statement that he tried to force her to sign on behalf of uh, Nicki Minaj and Kenneth Petty. This is the same associate that, um, that sent Jennifer a text message from Kenneth Petty with Nicki Minaj's phone number informing her that this is the number that you will receive a call from. And that number is the one that called her. Maybe Nikki believes he's innocent, but I personally think she knows the truth. Otherwise, I don't think she'd be campaigning so hard to discredit Jennifer. For example, she claimed that Kenneth was one year younger than Jennifer, which is not true. And even if it was, I'm not sure why she thought that that changes anything about allegedly raping someone at knife point. It, wh like what, can a 14-year-old not rape a 15-year-old? Oh wait, I think it was 15 and 16, whatever, whatever. Nikki also claimed that they were in a relationship with Jennifer Denies. Nikki addressed fans who brought up Kenneth's attempted rape conviction by replying to them on social media, saying he was 15, she was 16, in a relationship. What are your thoughts about that? It was like reliving it again, because it was a lie. Um, it wasn't true, we, we both were 16. We were never in a relationship. And also, again, that does not change anything. The guy who assaulted me was my partner at the time, but go off, Nikki. She also said of Jennifer, but white is right, when she's clearly mixed. And I don't think I need to explain what Nikki was trying to do there. Um, 
you know, this narrative that they put out of, you know, I'm a white girl who falsely accused a black boy. You don't get to do that. It doesn't matter what race you are. Every, you know, you should be able to speak up and, and not have people intimidate you. But I won't talk about it because it's not my table. But anyway, if her husband is innocent, why is she lying so much? So, yeah, I believe Nikki knows full well what she's doing. She is harassing and trying to silence her husband's survivor and is, in the process, re-traumatizing her, forcing her to relive this on live television. And Jennifer doesn't want attention. She wants the opposite. She's doing this because she wants people to leave her alone, to leave her family alone. All this because he failed to register as a sex offender and that got picked up on the news and then all the harassment starts again. Can you imagine how awful she must feel? All because, you know, Kenneth failed to register and Nikki used her platform to bully Jennifer after all this was exposed. And then the harassment this woman received pushed her to drop the lawsuit against Nikki, which is no doubt exactly what she wanted. I don't care who you stand. This sh ah! is evil. Go ahead, continue to stand Nikki all you want, but at the end of the day, you better at least be admitting that this shit is evil, okay? And don't tell me that there were no red flags with Kenneth or as something like that, because they have known each other since the early 2000s at least, you know, back when they were broken uh, queens. When Nikki first went public with the relationship, she got so much backlash that she turned off the comments. That right there, that's awareness. Not only was the attempted rape conviction public knowledge long before she married him, but he was also convicted with manslaughter. Uh, fewer people are talking about that. Um, there's a sex offender registry, but there's no murder registry for him to avoid, I guess. So it's not a topic of discussion. But yeah, he, uh, he shot the deceased multiple times with a handgun, similar to his actions when, you know defending himself in court with the whole rape charges thing. He was initially charged with a crime with a heavier sentence, second degree murder in this case, but he pled guilty to manslaughter for which he served seven years in prison. Now, as for how you can shoot someone multiple times and be convicted of anything less than second degree murder is beyond me, but I'm sure he had one hell of a lawyer to convince the judge it was an accident. I, I guess he just accidentally killed a man by shooting him over and over. Very believable. I, sorry, I'm just feeling super sarcastic today. Kenneth Petty was also accused of assaulting his ex-girlfriend, Noelle Doby. I won't be posting the pictures here because they are uh, more than a bit gratuitous. We're talking blood spatter staining a tile floor level of gruesome. She claims he tried to shoot her and that she was grateful her daughter was not home at the time. And if you're not worried about Nikki at this point, may I ask why? A anyway, it continues to get worse. Nikki also allegedly claims in a now-deleted tweet, Before she was famous, Kenneth fought her then-boyfriend because she refused to date him. She recalls this as if it's romantic, by the way. But that's not romantic, it's disgusting. No means no. He was not being respectful of Nikki's right to consent. Nikki didn't want to date him, and how does he react? He beats up her boyfriend? You know, all according to this alleged tweet, that, that's a huge red flag of somebody who does not respect consent. So what happens if one of these days Nikki decides not to let Kenneth have his way? What's gonna happen? Abusers don't stop abusing, they just get better at it. And, you know, the most common defense I do hear for this, other than Nikki always being right, a very familiar argument, seeing as how that's the attitude I had a decade ago, is that Kenneth might be abusing Nikki. And, yeah, regarding his track record, I do think this is plausible, if not likely. Allegedly. Just is just my opinion. Abusers really don't stop abusing, they just get better at it. He clearly has a pattern of violent behaviors. But that doesn't really make me trust her in this current state, you know. It makes me all the more wary, because an abused woman in love, who seems to have a bit of a power complex, by the way, is a very dangerous thing, especially since she has so much money and influence. It does make me worry about her, yes, but really, I've been... H how can you not worry about her, considering who she married? You know? And Jennifer did try to warn her, woman to woman, and it seems unlikely at this point, though, that Nikki is going to listen to reason. And while some people theorize that she's in denial, I personally think... 
She knows very well what kind of man she's married and is making every excuse she can because she doesn't care, because he's not doing it to her. Yet. You see, I am. I'm terrified that one day he will snap and hurt her, or worse. Just because I don't stand her anymore, that doesn't mean I hate her or I want her to die, you know. I don't want to have to mourn Nicki Minaj. I don't want to wake up one day, open up YouTube or whatever, and hear that Nicki Minaj has been assaulted or murdered. You think I'm upset now. You do not want to hear the noises that are going to come out of my mouth when this inevitably goes south. I have no faith that this will have a happy ending. None. It's also worth mentioning that she paid a $100,000 bond for her brother after he was arrested for molesting his 11-year-old stepdaughter, and she wrote a letter to the judge asking for leniency and accused the victim's mother of trying to extort her. He got 25 years. So my point with that is Nikki does turn a blind eye to this sort of behavior. She's done it before also when she worked with Takashi, who pleaded guilty to the use of a child in a sexual performance. Said Jane Doe, who is now an adult, claims that when she was 13, Takashi sexually assaulted her when she was under the influence, making that a violation of consent on at least two counts. When confronted about this collaboration, Nikki deflected by mentioning Lady Gaga worked with R. Kelly. <sighs> That's not an equal comparison. First of all, what she's talking about was eight f***ing years ago. Gaga does have empathy for sexual assault survivors being one herself, and Gaga has addressed and apologized for the collaboration and has removed it. Not to mention by deflecting onto Gaga, not only is that super shady, by the way, but Nikki is implying that what she's doing is wrong, but that she shouldn't face the consequences because Lady Gaga didn't face consequences. Meanwhile, she's doing this without taking any accountability for what she's done. Given how different these scenarios are, it's likely that Nikki targeted Gaga for other reasons. You know what, I'll just go ahead and explain it. So for those who don't know, Nikki was compared a lot to Gaga in the early days and dressed a little bit like her. Um, tried to become bisexual gay icon like her, but denied ever being inspired by her. So it seems like she has some kind of a Gaga complex. You know, not that she's uplifting of other women in general, and she does tend to shade whomever is popular at the moment if they don't drink her Kool-Aid. If you're not for her, you are against her. But all of that's beside the point, you know. That's all small fish stuff. Bottom line is, I don't think it's okay to knowingly associate with these sorts of people. With child molesters, you know. It's not okay to work with them, uplift them, and, en and engage in witness intimidation against the woman your husband raped, okay, allegedly. Okay, so now this is where it gets kind of weird. Nikki herself was also arrested when she was 20 years old for criminal possession of a weapon with the intent to use, something she posted on, of all platforms, Instagram, and later deleted after backlash, or well, maybe she deleted it because she posted her social security number on it, and that probably ruined her credit score. So she probably deleted it for a little bit of both reasons. You see, in the caption, because this can't get any worse, right? She writes in the caption, Criminal possession with the intent to use. I did use it, though. This is so inspiring to look back. The girl was leaking blood and spent days in the hospital. The word on the street was that I was going to be deported. I was so scared. LOL. I was on the run. I really thought I was in a ghetto movie. I hid my car and went to stay with my aunt in Brooklyn, Chile. Bwah ha 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 ha. Hashtag growth. I'll give you a moment to process that. So yeah, that that was Nikki herself saying she stabbed a girl when she was 20. Zero remorse like it's some funny coming-of-age anecdote. I, I don't know why she thought bragging about how she stabbed a girl would inspire people. Clearly there's something wrong with her worldview where she just dismisses violent crimes, and that's why I'm worried about her having such a large platform to influence. Also, what's that people are saying about Cardi B bragging about her criminal past. I mean, frack, at least she was just trying to survive, one would presume. Wrong as it may be to steal, you know. Even if it is from rich people or who are soliciting sex from you, it is wrong to steal. I'm just saying that I can at least sympathize with that, whereas Nikki just straight up stabbed someone, what? <laughs> and thinks it's funny. <laughs> And 
at least in Cardi B's case, you know, it did kind of make sense for her to bring up her criminal past to show how far she's come because her crimes were out of desperation for money and she no longer has to worry about money. But Nikki's crimes have a different flavor to them. <laughs> we're talking about stabbing a girl and allegedly trying to kill another girl by smashing her head in with a bottle. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Let's get to that. What about that? So, according to a former Hood Stars band member, 7up, around this time, she crashed at his place when she was on the run for <laughs> attempted murder. What? <laughs> what? So, where does the whole attempted murder thing come well, from? Well, that was a situation on, on that she had on her own. I mean, that's public knowledge. You can Google that. You know what I'm saying? That's not nothing I'm just throwing out there. That's, um, okay. I think of a situation at work. She had, and I think she busted the chick with the bottle and um, split the chick head open or whatever. And yeah, she was on the run at the time. So she okay, was so, working on it that year. So Nikki gets into an argument with some, some girl at work and hit her in the head with a bottle and what, yeah. just, just cut, cut yeah. her head open. Yeah, that's considered an attempt murder. Okay, so after she hit the girl, she what? Goes to Because she knew I was the street dude and I knew the law and I knew, you know, certain things about how the game go. So she just really needed my advice at that time. Like, she was nervous. She was, you know, scared. She was like, yo, man, listen, I did X, Y, Z, and, yo, I need somewhere to stay. Like, yo, boom, boom, boom. I said, listen, you know you good, come through. You know what I'm saying? You Gucci. So, and that's how that happened. And um, I think she, she, she stayed, she laid up for, you know, a couple days or whatever. She was on the run they was looking for her. And I think she wound up turning herself in at some point and dealing with the, you know, the, the situation or whatever. Okay, you know yeah, and ultimately, uh, I don't think she did any jail time or anything, did she? Nah, I don't, I think she probably got a slap on the wrist, because, so, you know, it was probably her first offense. No, normally I'd be hesitant to believe this stuff, but considering her track record, it doesn't seem out of character, and he doesn't seem to think there's anything wrong with what she did, he's more upset that she snubbed him after she got famous, which is interesting. I mean, I'd be more upset about the whole trying to kill someone thing, but different strokes for different folks. I mean, you know, also, if this story is true, the cops just kind of let her go after that. Like, what do Queen's cops see on a regular basis? Anyway, I get that living in a dangerous area, she probably had several times where she felt like she had to defend herself. But if you're hiding out in someone's house on the run, I'm thinking you're probably the assailant. I say probably because I'm hesitant to speak in terms of absolute. Uh, and while I personally believe that some people deserve to have their asses beaten off, yeah, but using a weapon to attack someone with an intent to kill is a different story. Even though all this happened, like, what, 20 years ago, it's hard to see all of these things as being in the past when she's in still engaging in criminal behavior. But now she's allegedly graduated from doing the dirty work herself to getting others to do it for her. Not to mention the obvious point that this woman is rich, beautiful, famous, and powerful, and yet she settles down with a convict from her past and allegedly harasses the woman who he, he allegedly raped at knife point nearly 30 years ago. I'm getting so sick of saying the word allegedly. But at the very least, you'd think that Nikki would let her move on with her life. Instead, she uses her good fortune to put her down, to intimidate. And I don't find anything hashtag inspiring about any of this. And that's why I worry about Barb's fans who, like I once did, obsess over Nikki and see her as a role model, see her as being completely perfect, will let her convince them that 2 plus 2 equals 5, you know? And I don't mean in, like, this way, like, oh, well, 2.4 rounds down to 2, but 2.4 plus 2.4 goes to 4.8, which rounds up to 5. F*** you. You know what I'm saying. I don't know where that tangent came from. I, I hate math. I just did my taxes. I hate math more than anything. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, sure, celebrities should not be role models to begin with. Nor do I think that it's generally right to force a celebrity to be a moral model, but she does present herself as one, and she carries herself as one. She feeds into it. And then... You know, she does all of this stuff. It's one thing, the stuff she did before she's famous, but the stuff she's been doing lately, it's just... Wow. And then, she has the nerve to tweet about the Chris Rock, Will Smith thing like she has a moral high ground. <laughs> Honey, you stabbed a girl. <laughs> you tried to kill someone. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> What? I can't.
can't. What? And back to the most prominent allegations. If you're still not on board, I'm gonna ask you to put yourself in Jennifer's shoes. You know, imagine having to move multiple times throughout your life because people are harassing you. Because your rapist and his superstar wife feels like he's too special to register as a goddamn ah! sex offender. So nearly 30 years after your peace of mind was stolen from you, right when you're finally starting to move on and love yourself, millions of people are scrutinizing you because of what someone did to you when you were just 16 years old. 16 years old with no reason to lie about this random dude who just so happened to end up becoming famous and marrying a woman who's way out of his league, by the way. Imagine how overwhelming that must be. To constantly have to defend yourself because a man violated you and then ended up marrying someone with a huge platform who isn't afraid to weaponize it. And I can understand why a woman would want to keep the man she loves out of jail. Especially if she is being abused. But not only could all of this be avoided if he had just, you know, taken responsibility for his actions and registered as a sex offender. But when you're in love with a violent man who has a history of assaulting women, you are setting yourself up for hurt. And you are setting a bad example for your fans, a lot of whom are very young. So if you're still standing, Nikki, after all this, I need you kids to understand it is unhealthy to obsess over someone to the point where you believe they can do no wrong to begin with. But then there's this much evidence. Take it from someone who has been there. This culture, this stan culture, has you brainwashed. And I am begging you guys to take a step back from stan Twitter and evaluate this situation more logically. You can still love her. You can still give her the benefit of a doubt. You can still listen to her music. But please, just don't worship her like she's a deity. Again, I'm speaking from experience. It can be fun to fawn over our favorite artists. It can take us out of, you know, our daily lives and distract us from the horrible things we've ha had to go through ourselves. But you, know, you need to understand that nobody is perfect, least of all a celebrity. Also, and this is just a totally random thing that's bugging me. I stayed in school for this woman, and then she marries a high school dropout who spent a quarter of his life in jail. Are you kidding me? Nikki, you had better pay my tuition. I don't care if he fucks her three times a night. I don't care if he fucks her six times a night. No dick is worth this shit. I think deep down, I will always love Nicki Minaj. I know. Judge me all you want. It, it, it's just, it's hard. It's hard. You know, after all, her work kept me going when I was in an extremely dark place and ready to end it all. But I no longer have any respect for her beyond the base level respect I give all life. The base level respect I give most life. And all of this has me, you know, feeling incredibly disillusioned. And I hope this situation has some kind of a happy ending or something. Like she comes to her senses and leaves him. But for now, I have taken a step back from her and I have no intention of ever being a barb again. Why? Because she would have to grow tremendously as a person for me to overlook all this. And my faith in the rich and famous is somewhere in the gutter. Maybe even lower than that. It, it might be what the center of the earth is made out of. If she didn't learn these lessons when she's broke, you know, I, I just don't have any hope she's going to learn these lessons while rich and surrounded by enablers who are at the end of the day only interested in the money she can generate and not in her personal growth. You know that old Jesus verse, it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into heaven? I feel like that applies fairly well to celebrity culture in general nowadays. There are exceptions, of course, but try to keep it in mind next time you catch yourself regarding a celebrity like they're anything more than a human being. Sorry this was such an unpleasant video. I know y'all voted for it, but I don't think everyone knew who just, just how horrifying this whole case is. Even I didn't know Nikki stabbed a girl until I encountered it while fact-checking something else. So anyway, I hope my next video can be a happier one and more monetizable. Uh, please consider joining my Patreon for some lighter content. I'd really appreciate it. As for the upcoming audiobook, I'm excited to announce that I have launched the Cry for the Devil side channel, which will contain the audiobook when it's ready, as well as some fun content related to my book and writing in general. Remember, all patrons get early access to all of my videos. And that does include books on, I mean, books, <laughs> videos on my side channel as well. You'll also get membership to the Team Discord, so you can choose to join either Team Eredi, Team William, or Team Elijah.
I actually recorded a uh, Ready Constantino makeup tutorial, and it took me like hours, and uh, I did not realize until I was finished that I was not recording any sound, so um, I, I guess I gotta start that one over again, but anyway... Uh... <laughs> I also added some more prints to my store if you want to help me raise money from this project because it, it would just really help me out a lot and I just know I'm not going to get much money from this video compared to the emotional turmoil I felt when working on this video. <laughs> so anyway, I guess that's all. Uh, please rate, subscribe, and of course, blessed be motherfuckers. Ah!